Hello students, in today's class we are going to study about orbital shapes. There are various orbital shapes that we will study. We have already seen what are orbitals, but today we will study the S, P, D and F orbital shapes. Based on these orbital shapes, the entire periodic table is also classified into S, P, D, F blocks as well. Now what do we mean by orbital shapes? I have already shown you a proton and a neutron which is there inside the nucleus and an electron which is revolving around the nucleus. Now when the electron is revolving around the nucleus, this particular path which, is, which it follows is known as orbital. Because this is a 2D drawing of a very generalized atom, I have just drawn a circle over here. But this orbital can have various shapes. And the names of the shapes are S orbital, P orbital, D orbital and F orbital. What does SPDF stand for? The orbital names S, P, D and F stand for given to the group of lines originally noted in the spectra of alkali metals. Now what do we mean by spectra of alkali metals over here we are talking about the classification or the block system which was given to the periodic table by Mendeleev. These lines are called as sharp, principal, diffuse and fundamental. Now what do we mean by this? What do we mean by sharp, principal, diffuse and fundamental? That means if I have S and P, both of them have sharp structure, a particular way of the orbital, a particular direction and shape in which the electron will move. That will be very distinct and different from each other. The S orbital will be different from P, the P will be different from D and D will be different from F. Thus, it says these are sharp, principal, diffuse and fundamental. Shapes of orbitals and electron density patterns. The S orbital is spherical. Now, what do we mean by spherical? So, now let me just draw S over here. Again, I'm drawing a proton and a neutron inside a nucleus. And the electron which is going around it is spherical in nature. That means the electron is going in a circular format around the nucleus. The P are polar oriented. Over here, can you see? The P is polar and oriented in a particular XYZ direction. Now, what do we mean by XYZ direction? Every orbital is categorized with respect to three axes. I'm just drawing three axes over here. X-axis, Y-axis and Z-axis. You can either switch Y and Z. You can keep this as Y, this as Z. But I'm just keeping it as Y and Z. So every orbital shape will be with respect to the three axes X, Y and Z. It may be simpler to think of these two letters in the terms of shape D and F aren't described readily. That means I can easily draw an S orbital which is spherical. For a P I can draw a dumbbell shape. Let me just first make the nucleus for you. It is a proton and a neutron. Over here I'm just drawing one proton and one neutron for the simplicity purpose. Because we are having an in general version of a nucleus, there can be many number of protons and neutrons. Over here, I am drawing a dumbbell shaped orbital. And inside this dumbbell shaped orbital, we have an electron. This electron is actually moving in this particular shape. Again, over here, we will have x axis. We'll have the y-axis and we'll have the, this will be my z-axis. X, y and z. So this is my s orbital, this is my p orbital. For d and f, what they have said over here is d and f aren't described as readily because these are complex in nature. They cannot be easily de described with the 2D format, the format of pen and paper. We have to see them in the 3D format to actually see how they look. 
However, if you look at the cross section area of an orbital, it isn't uniform. You will not find uniformity in it. For S orbital, for example, there are shells of higher and lower electron density. Very important electron density. Now, what do we mean by electron density? Number of electrons at that particular spot or at that particular space that particular thing is known as electron density now why am i talking about electron density why are we looking into electron density it is because if i take this particular s orbital over here let me just change the color and show it to you so you all will understand it better and if I am cutting this particular S orbital like this, just to get the cross section area, that means this side of the line is a cross section area. Even this side of the line is also another cross section area. If you see over here, in this particular, this side cross sectional area, there is one electron. So I can just write one electron in the cross section area. But if I'm talking about this side, there are no electrons over here. in the entire orbit. There are no electrons. So this becomes my zero electron. So if you see over here, there is no uniformity. Why? Because there are zero electrons over here and there is one electron over here. So the electron density is quite different. The electron density is very different. Thus, even in the simplest S orbital shell, S orbital is considered to be the simplest. Even there, there is no uniformity. In the same way for a p orbital, if I cut it from here, if I'm cutting it from here, this becomes my one cross-sectional area. This becomes another cross-sectional area. In this particular cross-sectional area, I have one electron. In this particular cross-sectional area, if you see the entire orbit, the entire orbit does not have any electrons. Again, it becomes zero electron. Thus, we have zero electron and one electron. This is the difference. The density near the nucleus is very low, if not zero. So this is important. We have the nucleus having the density very low, if not zero. It can be zero, but if it is not zero, it is very low. It is not zero, however, so there are small chances of finding electrons within the atomic nucleus. Now, why do we say this? Why do we say that within the atomic nucleus also we'll be able to find them because this, this is the path that it is going to follow. And thus the electron might pass through the atomic nucleus as well. What the orbital shapes mean, the electronic configuration of an atom denotes the distribution of electrons among the available shells. That means there can be more than one shell. I'm just making the proton and the neutron over here and I have other shells. Let me make two shells over here, two orbits in which the electrons will be moving in different orbitals. I have electron and electrons. I have more electrons in the in the first electron. In the first orbit, I have two electrons. In the next orbit, let's say I have four electrons. Okay, so now this is the distribution of electrons in various shells, and that is given to us by electronic configuration. Now, electronic configuration in itself is another huge topic which we will cover, but this is the basics of it in which we are trying to figure out how the electrons have been distributed in a particular atom. At any point in time, an electron can be anywhere, but it's probably contained somewhere in the volume described by the orbital shape. For example, if this electron is in the p orbital, so this is how it is going to move around in the p orbital. If it is moving in the p orbital, it can be anywhere, but it might be. There are high chances of, there is high probability of it to be in this particular orbital, which is important. Electrons can move between orbitals by absorbing and emitting packets of quantum energy. Very important. What do we mean by that? What do we mean by quantum energy packets? This is nothing but taking in or giving out energy. If you take in energy, you are going to the higher orbital. If you give out energy, you're coming to the lower orbital. The standard notation lists the subshell symbols 
one after another. Every shell also consists subshells. The standard notation also has subshells. The number of electrons contained in its subshell is stated explicitly. We will look into that as well. For example, okay, so now over here, let us consider the example of beryllium with an atomic and electronic number of four. So beryllium has an electronic number four. Let us just write beryllium atomic number. Now, how do we write it as four? What is the electronic configuration? One, S2, two, S2. That is it. That is all. How can we make this? 1 and 2 are nothing but my principal quantum numbers that are the number of shells. That means if I take beryllium over here, this is my beryllium atom. The first shell will contain two electrons. 1, 2. 1, S2. The second shell will also contain two electrons. One, maybe over here two. Two S2. This is beryllium. Another way of writing beryllium is nothing but helium. Two S2. Why have I written helium two S2? Because helium is one S2. The electronic configuration of helium is one S2. So instead of writing one S2, I can simply write helium. And then I can write helium 2s2. This is what is given over here. Either I can write it as 1s2, 2s2 or I can write it as helium 2s2. The superscript in the num is the number of electrons. What do we mean by superscript? Superscript is nothing but the number which is there on the top. Super, subscript, superscript. Superscript is the one which is at the top. So the numbers which are at the top become the number of electrons. The superscript is the number of electrons in the level. For beryllium, there are two electrons in 1s orbital and two electrons in the 2s orbital. The number in front of the energy level indicates relative energy, this particular thing. It is the number which is in the front. It indicates the relative energy. That means the electrons which are present in the 1s orbital will have lesser energy. I'm talking in terms of energy over here will have lesser energy as compared to the electrons which are there in the 2s orbital. That is important. Both the electrons will not have the same energy. For example, 1s is lower energy than 2s, which in turn is lower energy than 2p. Why? Because we start off with 1s, then we move to 2s, then we go to 2p. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6 and so on. This is exactly how the electronic configuration will go on. But this right now is just the basics of it. The number in front of the energy level also indicates the distance from the nucleus. For example, over here we have 1s2. 1s2 is nothing but the first shell. That means it is the first energy level right after the nucleus. For 2s2, it is the second shell, the second energy level right after the nucleus. The 1s is closer to the atomic nucleus than 2s. Over here, we have all the four orbitals. As I have said, s orbital, you have a proton and the neutron inside the nucleus. And then you will have a spherical shape orbital around it wherein a single electron or multiple electrons can move. Over here we have three axes, the x-axis, the y-axis and the z-axis. S orbital is considered to be the simplest version or the simplest orbital ever. After that we have the p orbital. p orbital as I said it is dumbbell shaped again a proton and a neutron in the middle. I had drawn a vertical p orbital, they have drawn a horizontal p orbital wherein you have the p orbital moving in this way. Along with the axis, over here also we have the x-axis, the y-axis and the z-axis. And this in the middle becomes my nucleus. Over here also this in the middle is the nucleus. This is the p orbital.
Moving on to D orbital, if you see over here D and F, both of them, it is difficult to draw them in the 2D image, but we can actually see them clearly in the 3D format. Yet over here we have an example of the D orbital, where this particular thing in the middle becomes my nucleus. If you see over here, here I have considered the X axis. We have the X axis over here, the Y axis over here, and the Z axis over here. And this is the 3D format of it going into various directions, forming a complex D orbital. Finally, moving on to the F orbital. It's very difficult to actually have an F orbital on the paper. Again, we have X axis, Y axis, Z axis. If you look into the orbitals, this is how the orbitals are. If you have a look at them, this is how they look. It is not a very defined or a very definitive shape. The shapes have been changing and it's very difficult to actually spot them and create them on a 2D version. Again, some of them is, are coming out of the paper, some of them are going inside the paper. This is how the F orbital looks like. So with this, we finish the orbital shapes of S, P, D and F. We started off with what are orbitals. We had a touch on an electronic configuration of it and how the electronic configuration actually affect the shape of the S orbital, P orbital, D orbital and F orbital. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you.